welcome back to the White Horse. I'm Peter Spora and today I'm going to see what's inside this box that the postman has just delivered to me. It's probably from a customer wanting something done to a locomotive and I have no idea what it is. Well here we are, right at the top just as it should be. There's a brief letter telling me what he wants. Thank you for agreeing to take on this work for me. Oh goodness, I'm in trouble now. I enclosed my little John plus the remote. Plus the kit you sold to me. Well, we've got a small diesel sound card there. A remote control that's like a Dandere space gun. And what looks like a beautiful little all metal diesel locomotive. I assume it's already been radio controlled. Yes, there's the receiver. And the customer wants me to fit the sound card. So before I radio control any locomotive, I always test it to make sure that everything is working. Well, she seems nice and lively. Let's, rest, let's put the sound system in. Well, the first thing I need to do is to take the top off the logo and on inspection we can see that we've got six screws that hopefully will take the top off because I'm never given any instructions. To do this carefully I always use a padded tray so that'll be put in there and now we'll take the top off. You'll probably notice on the side here is a tray for putting the items in and then within the tray there's another little container for putting the screws in and each sub-assembly is dealt with in this way. There she goes. And I should be able to, yes, remove the complete system from the body. Well there's not a great deal of room to get anything more under the bonnet. It's virtually taken up by the battery and the speed controller and the motor. If I lay the body against the chassis, you can see that there is enough space here for hopefully to put the speaker behind the engine grille. Well, these are the items of equipment that have got to fit inside the locomotive. This is the DigiSound sound unit for the small diesel engine. It also needs a two-way switcher, which will plug into the receiver, and this will give the power to energize the engine for start-up and shutdown sequence, and will also blow the horn. In the cab itself, there seems to be a little cupboard here, and what we're going to do is to fit. So, with the sound unit placed there, a good spot for the hole would be about there, but what's happening on the other side? Aha! Uh -huh. It's going to be very close to the receiver, so I think I'll remove the receiver before I drill the hole. First we'll just ding the, where we want the hole to be. Now we're at the pillar drill. And we carefully first drill a small hole. First one's always a hard one. We a five mil. And then finally an 8mm. Now you could chamfer this hole in the pillar drill but it goes too fast so I'm using a standard hand drill and we simply run it around, smooth off the edges of the hole. So we are now going to replace the receiver where it was using the double sided tape and there it is back into place with a hole leading up into the cab space so we can connect on the sound card. The hollow hole has been painted black. It's a steel plate on the running board. Tear off the double-sided tape and apply it evenly to the back head. These tapes are so good, it never comes off. You can lift the locomotive by it. 
So now we're going to put a plug on here and feed the wires down there. Of course we'll hide all the wires away underneath the running board. So here are all the wires coming from above, but before I cut them to size, I must know where they're going to go. So here's a little two-way switcher unit that activates the horn and the engine start sequence. We're going to plug that into channel 2 and just place it on top of the receiver. It's a neat enough little place for it to go. I'll be telling you what this little button is for in a minute. But now we've got to link up all these wires. There are some really fancy wire strippers on the market. I got mine from Rapid. They only cost about £2.50. Absolutely brilliant. You need to take off about 3 millimeters from each end of wire. Before joining the wires, first we tin them. So with the pre-tinned wires, we now simply touch a soldering iron and we have a lovely joint there. And we do it to both of them. So with the heat shrink on, we can just tuck the wires out of the way and they'll be safe and secure behind there. Next, well, we've got to take the motor wires and the power wires and we've got to take them to the top side where the speed controller is. And we're going to do that through that hole there. So there's the blue wire from the sound module connected onto the motor wire leading from the Viper 10. And the same has been done on the other side. There's the yellow motor wire from the sound module connected to the other wire of the electric motor. So these are the two power wires coming up from the sound card. They'll be connected to the switch, the on off switch to get power and of course to the charging socket to get the negative. So the black wire from the sound card is fed into the negative on the charging socket and on the other side here the power wire from the sound card is fed into the on terminal on the on off switch. All that remains now is to take these speaker wires and feed them up to the front. So we take the speaker wires Feed them up through the little 5mm hole that I've just drilled in the running board. Now I'm going to use some special little clips to secure them into place. Just put one there and I'm going to put another one here. So here are the two little speaker wires coming up. And what we've got to do now is just to solder them into place. one. So that's all done. Now that is going to be mounted like that. So there's the speaker on the front of the battery. We have the sound unit on the inside of the cab all properly plugged in the right way around. We're now ready for the first systems check. Before doing the first systems check we must first set up the two-way switcher unit. Now if you don't know what one of these are, this is what will turn the engine on and off and also blow the horn. To set this one up, I'm going to press it with the end of an old paintbrush and turn on the loco. You'll see here that there are little lights. Now when I release it, long flash, quick flash. That is now set up correctly for this locomotive. Now, if that was too quick for you, don't worry. Read the instructions and you'll get to master it. So now we've set up the two-way switcher unit, which is underneath the cab floor, we could now do the first systems check. Here's the transmitter. First, we turn on the transmitter. And now we can turn on the locomotive. Now, when I pull the trigger, the horn blows. And now when I press the trigger, the engine should start. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? 
Now, of course, the, I started the engine and it's continuing to run until I shut it down again. Well, that's just great. Let's put the top back on her. So now it's time to pop the top back on the loco, but you can see here that you can see straight through the grill. So I'm going to take a piece of black card. Well, not card, this is black paper actually. If you don't have black paper, then find a piece of white paper and use some black felt pen. This is going to go in behind there and completely screen it off. So there's the black paper held in place with some little double-sided sticky and you can't see through the grill anymore. So now it's a case of just fitting the body over the whole thing. And now I've got to fit the screws. So with the loco, in the little loco tray, you can pick up the screws. Being brass, of course, I can't use magnetic screwdrivers. Unscrew all six screws. That's the last screw in place, and you can see here that all the wires have been tidy up, used, tidied up using one of these very nice and handy aluminium self-adhesive wire clips. Well, the locomotive is now all complete and ready for test. Well, it doesn't get much better than that.